Hey guys, what's up? I'm Kirsten. I'm Clea. Welcome to Casey Cafe. We'll be talking about ourselves. Excellent topic. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we have a few questions that we kind of thought of to figure out where we start because I feel like that was the first thing we were like, what do we talk about? How far do we want to go back? And I feel like that's yeah. kind of a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Not that we're saying like we were like 108 years old, but just like we have had, we have enjoyed life. Yeah. We are living it to the fullest. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I like to collect experiences and that's how I like to think of it. Yeah. <laughs> end, always growing, always yes. thinking of something new to achieve. Um, so we started off with our first question is, how did we find out we were dyslexic? Oh, how did we start working at Casey? Oh, oh, sorry. That's okay. Okay. Because <laughs> we're dyslexic. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the intervention. Okay, so our first question we did was, how did we start Casey at Casey Dyslexic Learning Center? Yeah. So what was your, what's your um, part? I actually, I just answered an ad. I was uh, in adult ed. I was upgrading because I wanted to go into uh, computer programming, or I thought at the time. And I was upgrading my math, and I was tutoring people in math because uh, at the time, I don't know if you know, but one of the hard parts about adult ed is it happens in regular school hours. So it's really hard to have a regular job when you're going to adult ed um, because they expect you to go 9 to 5. There's homework, all this kind of thing. It's, it's basically just like being in high school again. So I was just making extra money by tutoring in math. And then, um, yeah, I started here at KC. And uh, I remember <laughs> the first thing was like my funniest story. Um, we had to do the tutor screening. Okay. <laughs> and I actually passed the tutor screening. I do not know how because your uh, Cheryl was explaining about how dyslexic people read whole word. And I remember that she put up the word cat. And she said, how many sounds is cat? And I'm very confident. I was like, one. <laughs> and then she was like, actually, <laughs> it's not. It's not. And she was like, it's made up of these. And I understood the concept of letters. Like, I understood that letters were these individual things. I just had never thought of them as as being anything other than you grouped these whole sounds. So then everybody else and I was like, that's the sounds k at. And I was like. Wow, okay. just like a light bulb. Like, yeah, so <laughs> I kept that under my hat for a while. And then I don't remember you guys, um, we had that big thing, like Susan Barton came, and you had that big thing at the oh, Franklin Manitoba Yes, Center. I remember that, yeah, yeah, the presentation that she did. Yeah. And she was talking about, um, she was talking about the signs of dyslexia and mm. adults with dyslexia and all this, and I was sitting yeah. there, and I was literally writing with my horrifying I think I remember, yeah, I remember that yeah. you were there, and I think yeah. that's when, like, me and you kind of first met, because I yeah. know that, like, I was kind of finishing being a student, and yes. then you started working, yeah, okay, yeah. I remember yeah. that, yeah. And I was just, at the more and more they went out, she was just basically describing my childhood, my school experiences, <laughs> I was, I was literally writing, looking at my writing, and being like, oh, I have horrifying dysgraphia. So then after that, I was like, I asked your mom, but I'd gone through the, I asked your mom if she could test me, but I'd yeah. gone through, the, I'd, I'd spent the summer looking through the program and I spent the summer teaching, so I had learned phonemic awareness at that point. Right. So it was really interesting because when she was testing me, I was like, rules, rules. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I was like, woo! But yeah. I feel like when you, like, when you started though, and like, and you did the training, like, what was like, I think, what was the biggest thing that you were like shocked by? Like, was there something that really, like, made you feel like, whoa, like, I did not know that? Like, that was that it, maybe, that was like, just... That cat thing. Yeah. That was the cat thing. And that, and that everybody else in the room yeah. knew, and I didn't. Okay. And, like, How did you feel about that? Like, I feel like if that was me, I would feel I pretty... Crazy. I'd feel, like, really pressured. Like, I'd probably yeah, feel super nervous. Yeah, it was nervous. really, really shocking because I was, like... I even went home and I was, like... I was, like, maybe you're just having a bad day because... Like, have you ever thought it's... Been, like, I, I was just trying to make any exp exp mm -hmm. explanation whatsoever because I was... Yeah was 30 or 31 I can't remember when I started here I don't remember what year that was so I was like, there's no well, way I, I was looking at the progress of some of the students it was like 2015 oh okay. so it might have been around there I yeah. think I'm thinking maybe a little bit maybe the year before that too maybe 2014 because yeah. I just thought there's <clears> no <throat> way that I would have gone through high school and yeah and, and and at the time too I was trying to go to university and I, I kept feeling I kept not feeling nervous but I kept like I couldn't 
they wouldn't let me do it the like uh, my way if that makes yeah. sense and I was so used to be always being allowed to just do things my way because that's what worked and then in university they're like no like you mean like in studying and stuff like yeah, studying and, and, and how like to give the information like okay I I had failed I'd failed school for a really long time at that point um and in grade 11 I just started asking I just started doing everything verbally, basically. I barely went to school at all. I went to school three days a week, and that really helped because I was so stressed all the time. Yeah. And I just was doing everything, like, making friends with the teachers, networking. Like, I just was doing it my way. And then I got to university, and I'm like, no, we want you to read this, and then we want to write this, and then you're going to hand that in to me. And I was like... So it wasn't very interactive. Not at all. No. So, at all. yeah, I feel like that would be something I think I would struggle with, too. Like, if something yeah. was just, like, not interactive. Because I feel like making connections is important. Well, not a lot of hands-on, <coughs> too, right? Like, yeah. when you go to university, everything's so theoretical. Like they Yeah, that does make sense. Yeah, and it's not... That's not... How we work. No, <laughs> not at all. Right? How like, we work or we think. Yeah, yeah, like, we were very much hands-on. Yeah. And it was just weird, too, because, like... I feel, too, like, having <coughs> been, I think people still, at, when I was in high school, because I'm 37 almost, so uh, that was a long time ago, um, people still thought dyslexia equaled low intelligence, right? So being a person with really high intelligence. Yeah. I even think about that right now. Like, I still yeah. feel like that's a stigma that is, like, you're dyslexic, you're dumb. Like, yeah. it's just, and it's and it's not even, it's not even that, right? Like, you talk to someone who's dyslexic and you're like, wow, you know so much about this topic or yeah. something super in particular and they're like, wow, like, you know your stuff. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's where, <clears throat> that's where I just feel like it sucks. Like, you know, that's where I feel like, that's why we're talking about it because I want, we want people to know that like, if you're dyslexic, you have to be smart, mm-hmm. right? Like, I remember, like, when I got tested when I was diagnosed like I was so nervous like being in that room like I know my mom did your diagnosis right but for me like I went to a psychologist and it was nerve-wracking I was like what are they gonna ask me like what am I gonna do Mm -hmm. and I just felt like really anxious and I feel like but I feel like because I was like really like I feel like in that moment I was kind of didn't know what to expect but then after I started to get to know the psychologist I was like hey this is well, I'll just talk. I'll talk to them, and it was fine. But I could see someone who'd be dyslexic, who's pretty shy, or maybe like their um, word retrieval, yeah. or like just even like interaction with someone else. Like they might be so shy where they won't respond, right? Like they won't. How about you? How did you start getting? Um, okay. Well, I start. Well, I started. Um, I was diagnosed when I was twelve, and. I feel like that was kind of a hard time for me because I just didn't know who I was at that time. I was 12 yeah, years old. It was old. a horrible age. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just like, you know what? I can't read. I can't spell. I have to figure this out. My mom was like, we have to figure this out or like I'm not going to school. I was going to drop yeah. out when I was in grade six and I was like, I'm done. I can't memorize anymore. It just wasn't working for me. But um, my mom actually started Casey Dyslexic Learning Center. And um, so that was like a whole new like perspective because we didn't know if it was going to work. We were like, let's just try this program and let's just see. So I was like, kind of like the, like the test subject <laughs> for a while. We were like, we don't know if this is gonna work, but let's just try. There's nothing else to do but try this. Yeah. So we were like, okay, let's just do that. So we, my mom went to California and got the program, and we just like started, like at home. We just like started I doing didn't it. Realize that she went to California. Yeah, she, yeah, she went to California, and I remember she got back, and I was, I was like, I don't want to do this. Like I was like so mad. I was like, I want to do this. Um, but yeah, no, it would turn it out really well. And I started to understand things. And like, even I think with like, when you said cat, like knowing that there's three sounds within that one word, I was like, wow. Like, yeah. I literally was like, what? So then knowing like my phonemic awareness was like, not that great. Like there was, I didn't know how to put sounds together. I kind of just memorized words as to get like, just yeah. that was the word. And I'm going to try and spell it the best that I can from memory and just and so again reading was a lot more easier because I just memorized words but spelling was just like insanely oh my god it was terrible I feel like my school though like my teachers were really like I had good teachers I think that was the only reason why I like got as far as I did because they were super helpful they gave me notes they were like you know what let's just sit there listen and then we'll give you the notes after and so I feel like there was a combination accommodations even before I actually learned I was dyslexic because I needed I needed that support right or I just wasn't going to do it um but yeah I think with my mom going and we're like okay now let's start the learning center so that was like I was like 13 I was going into like grade 8 and I was like let's 
my mom's like, let's start a center. And I was like, okay, <laughs> let's do that. And, um, and then, yeah, I graduated high school and then I started here, I believe 2016. That was like when I actually became a tutor, but I've before that, like I finished the program when I was mm, say like grade 11, grade 11, I finished and there was 10 books. So I feel like I was like, when is it ever going to get to the 10th book? Like I was like, when is it ever going to get, um, but then, yeah, so I finished, um, I finished high school and then, yeah, I was like, you know what? I think it'd be good for me to become a tutor. I was in hair school actually at the time to be a hairdresser. Yeah. Yeah. So I was kind of like doing school and I went to, um, arts and technology center in Windsor park. So that was, I love that school. I think that was like the best experience because it was such a hands-on experience where mm-hmm. I was like I was actually doing it and it was I was gonna get my red seal so that was fun um and then yeah I started being a tutor and I would come here after work after school and I did my training in the summer I believe I I was in like a group of um there was like five of us and I kind of just joined in but I feel like when I was becoming like doing the training I was like oh yeah there's this rule there's this rule like there was like so much that was coming back to me that I feel like I kind of forgot so I knew that that was really helpful, I think, even just for me to kind of yeah. have that all refreshed again. So I think that was kind of, yeah, that was my that was my starting up, kind of yeah. becoming a tutor. Yeah. Yeah. That's so neat. Yeah. I like it. No, it's awesome. All right, so the next question is, how did we feel? Wait, what? How did we find? <laughs> no, no, sorry. Red right only. How did we find out we were dyslexic? Okay, we did that. How did we feel before intervention? How did we feel before intervention? How did we feel before we knew we were dyslexic? Hmm. For me, I, I, oh my gosh, it was very complicated, I think. I felt like I was just not enough. And I know that doesn't, that doesn't sound like a lot, but it just, to feel like you're not enough as a person in any part of your life, like just. That's, that's a big one. Like, yeah. that's lots. Yeah. Like, that's like. And that was, oh my gosh, it affected everything. <clears throat> like, um, I struggled with drugs and alcohol for many 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 years probably about 10 years uh i and i oh constantly had people saying to me you know you're smart you just need to try harder you just need to yeah. focus you just need like all these things and i just felt i i felt like i was i was trying my absolute best and then yeah it just left me feeling like i was not enough i think that takes a lot of out of you like that takes a lot of energy to yeah. just feel like that consistently always like yeah. I feel like your self-worth it's yeah. just it's so, so it's low not, and diminishing it. that yeah. it's just like yeah I feel like for me that was one of again I struggled with drugs and alcohol for again like quite a long time mm-hmm. and it was I think it was kind of like where I, I think it started to kind of be like in school when I was in like uh, like middle school like I was friends with everybody like I had friends like in you know the jocks and the sports and then I like had the artsy people and um like you know just everybody I just talked to everybody and so I feel like having friends helped me with like hey like I don't know how to do this like can you help me with this and like I feel like I always like asked and seeked for help in that area because I felt like that was where I was comfortable um but I think like when I started to feel like when things were so hard I would like hold everything in all day yeah and then when I got home I'd be like Wah! and I would like explode on my mom and my mom would be like whoa like what like did you definitely didn't have a good day today so I felt like I kept a lot of it in because I was I, I don't know I felt like I'm a people pleaser like I'm always just like you know like oh I'm, I'm great I'm fine you know like and I didn't really like show like the like people that were kind of just not I wasn't close to yeah. like truly who I was because I was so insecure like I didn't want them to judge me or think that I was like which makes total sense yeah like you're already you already have this huge part of yourself that you don't think is good you yeah. don't want other people knowing about it right yeah like, and I feel like I was like I felt like I just felt so insecure and like I'm so good at all these other things but I was like how is this like how can I just not read and spell like I just I actually didn't even understand how that was possible and I just, I felt, like, really, like, I didn't know myself. Because I was like, what's wrong? Like, why can't we fix this? Like, why isn't it that I'm struggling so much? Like, I, I just, it was so confusing. I remember talking to my mom one time, and I was just, like, I remember my mom was reading the book to me. And I was like, Mom, like, am I ever going to read? Like, am I ever going to learn how to read and spell? Like, am I just going to be dumb and really? stupid? Yeah. And my mom, like, I remember, like, maybe a couple years after I said that, my mom, like, when I was an, an adult, 
she's like you said this and i was like oh my god like that's so sad like what did you do mom and she's like i just went upstairs and cried <laughs> like and i and i it's so true like i could just feel my mom being like also confused and being like how can't i help my daughter like what is it that i'm yeah. doing I, you know i know i feel like so many of the parents come in that i i just you can see how stressed they are because their kid is so stressed and yeah and it's hard because they don't know it's gonna work either like oh they're, yeah. and they're taking a huge chance on us and like yeah. we just have to let it go and happen and just keep you know growing the wall but yeah, yeah. like i can't imagine i can't imagine because that's where i feel like when i like again we were searching for something to work and we tried sylvan and like those programs helped me in math they helped me in science like learning the material but learning how to read and spell it just they ne- it, it was just memorize this memorize that and i was yeah. like i can't memorize anymore like that's not working yeah. and then again it was kind of like oh is this program going to be the same like is this going to be something i'm never going to it's not going to work right so i kind of doubted it at first i was like oh like is this going to be something like it's before yeah you know? and then and then like I think it's really like amazing that you just were like okay I'm gonna keep trying yeah and I feel like that's something that seems to be very unique um I f- uh, well I shouldn't say unique too but like of all of our students they never stop trying mm-hmm. like they come here they've tried everything and they're still willing to keep trying and I yeah. feel like that's something that's that's really cool that comes out of our struggles is that yeah. we're like we don't just <coughs> fall into it we don't crumple and give up we're like okay we're try keep so going, yeah keep going, keep going. and i think there's obviously going to be like fights and tears like i know that yeah. for me like it was like i don't want to do this again but then i think like you know having that support for my mom that was a huge push yeah. for me to be like okay let's just give it a try let's and just it, keep trying like so i'm so proud of all of you that just keep coming back yeah like yeah because totally. we I, I i know it's hard when i when we're in like tutor mode we can't be like yes we know like you know like we can't spend the whole time being like this is so hard i know it's so hard because we want to be like come on keep going but the fact that you keep coming back yeah. even though it's so hard is amazing i don't like that's a skill that so many people in this world don't have and everybody needs <laughs> like yeah. it's so awesome to yeah no, I, I love that I don't know. I feel like too, like just academically too. It was, it was, it was, it was hard sometimes to keep going. And I think that's kind of where the drugs and alcohol for that while came in. Was that there? I think we all reach a point where there's only so far you can push yourself and have no result, right? Like for sure. No matter what I did, these things weren't improving because I didn't know the proper thing to do. It would be like if I, you know, if. I think we use this analogy all the time. Like it would be like if I had diabetes, and I kept giving myself antibiotics, mm-hmm. expecting that that would fix my diabetes. You right. know, like yeah, I never had I never had a lot of friends to rely on. Like I had a lot of people around. See, but I I and like that's where I feel like that could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like that was for me. I feel like I like when I got into high school, I was like, who am I gonna be? And so I think I lowered my standards because of that. Like, because of reading and spelling was so hard, my self-worth was so low that I was, like, trying to pretend that I'm, like, everything's great and this is good and I was friends with everybody, but then I chose the bad group of kids that would get in trouble and then I would be a part of that. But I, you know, knew that that was wrong, you know, to skip class or do those things, but I still did it because I wanted to fit in. I wanted to feel that, like, I belonged And I think that that was where I think me and you are so different, right? Like, I think we handled it very differently. Yeah, I I definitely isolated. I isolated myself as much. Like, I had people that I kind of knew, but I I didn't like going out. I didn't like, like, I just, I was so stressed at the end of the day that I just couldn't handle anything. So I was just like, no, I'm not going to do any of that extra kind of socialization learning piece that people do because it's just and I'm just like I want to have fun (laughs) I'm like I want to have fun and I'm just like crazy (laughs) if people know me like very personally they know that I'm a very like outgoing pretty crazy (laughs) kind of person but that's like my energy I I I am now it definitely you know took you took some healing but like that was no and I love that because it's so fun every time we hang out like yeah all the time we come here and we're just like I don't, I'm like, am I at work? You know, yeah, no, and that's why I love this environment. Like, yeah. if you can tell, like, this is our center, and it's just, we got couches, and, like, it, we just make it. A lot of my students are like, hey, is this your home? Like, do you live here? <laughs> so I'm like, no, I don't live here. I'm just hanging out here a Yeah, lot. I got a cot in the back. That's my bedroom back there. 
I know it's so funny how often people ask that. Is this your house? Yeah, because I'm just like, yeah, I'm here a lot. Here a lot. <laughs> but I think that's why. Like, I think we we are here a lot. Like, yeah. I'm here a lot, and I think that like when it's a comfortable atmosphere, yeah, it just feels cozy and you feel more comfortable. Because I know when I like when I first started, like I feel like I was so anxious about everything else that like that's why we my mom just and I did it at home. Right, and she tutored me, and it was just more of a comfort thing at first. And I think that, like, when new students come in, they're like, okay, this is comfortable. And, like, I think that that makes a huge difference. Because they're kind of expecting, like, that school environment, right? Yeah. Fluorescent lights, desks, white, and you come here, and and we're all, like, vampires because they're Erlen. (laughs) They're just like, come into our living room. We're going to learn. (laughs) I know, even one of my students was like, why why is there lamps in every room? And I'm like, well, we just, like... You know, it's, it's too bright if we have those fl- fluorescent yeah. lights. And they're like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> or they're like, I like the lamps. So I was like, yeah, me too. <laughs> or like, you've been tutoring for like a few hours and you realize you haven't turned them on. And like, no, but none oh, yeah, everybody like, notices because yeah. they're all like, mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> no light. Just tutoring in the dark. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we have our next question. What challenges did we have in the result of being dyslexic? Uh, I think definitely would be the, the for, for me, would be the school social, like, once I hit university too, like I said, like, like I've never actually completed. I've never been able to complete a university course. Mm-hmm. Um, I just find like I can't do what's being asked of me within the timeline, <coughs> which is it's still a lot to of this day. Yeah, still to this day frustrates me because I still there's a piece of me inside of me that says that feels like you're not smart enough for university, despite like all the stuff that we do in a day, you yeah. know, and like I don't know, and I think definitely the so like I feel like if I had known what was going on with myself when I was younger I feel like I would have made more effort to be social you know so I feel like that's kind of like a, a yeah. long lasting thing but I also feel too because I think we were just talking about this a couple days ago and we were like we work at things we're not good we're not good at yeah right like we find things we're like hey we're not good at this so let's work on it and then we like hyper focus on that and we're like <laughs> we need to be good at that and I don't know if that's something where it's like we need to prove to ourselves or to others People. but I feel like for me sometimes it is some I feel like it's both I feel like sometimes I doubt myself yeah. and I think that that's maybe something like I think that's maybe like an old belief that I had before and I'm just slowly being like you know what? I don't believe that anymore and I'm slowly starting to separate. Like you I, know? I'm still waiting for the time. Where, where I think we were talking the other day, but when yeah. I can, when I can relax, because oh, yeah. if there's something that I don't know, I go and I master it because yeah. I have to know it. Yeah, you know. And and you're saying you do the same thing. Like, yeah, like yeah. they're okay. I don't know how to do this. Well, I'm going to spend this entire weekend, and that's what I'm doing. And but I think that's good almost too. Yeah. Like I don't know. If but then there's some people that are like focus on things you're good at. And then you don't waste that. See, so yeah, it's like, that's no, true, right? it's like I don't know. I get stuck and, like, I don't get stuck. Because you put all this energy into just, trying to be good at everything yeah. to make up for that little horrible right. voice that's still there. And that's why I feel like I was also, I, I get a lot of my insight from my students. So if I say, hey, I had this conversation with my student, because it's yeah. true. Like, yeah, that, like it's it's so you, have, you have so much. Like, I look, it's like I'm looking in a mirror and I'm like, whoa. So I have, like, these epiphanies where I'm like, wow, like, that was me. Like, this is so creepy. Like, it, it's not creepy, but it's just weird because it's like it's like I'm seeing myself outside of my body kind of feeling, and it's like, whoa. Um, and you mean, like, you're, you're, like, you're, like, twin? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, but I, but then it kind of like make it projects where I can see it, and then I can self evaluate myself and be like, okay, I'm going too far, or maybe I could try this. So I, I take it as a lot of feedback, and I don't take things very personally. So that's kind of where I'm like, okay, I'm I'm getting easier at like letting things go and processing that. Um, but I feel that like with trying different things that are challenging I find sometimes I do just I give up like I'm like I'm done like I think in the last video I was saying that yeah like sometimes I do just give up but I always seem to come back to it in like maybe like a year or like a couple months like in some weird way I'm kind of like subconsciously still thinking about it (laughs) like thinking about it there's this phrase I really love and I can't remember who said it to me but it was it was give up today so you can try again tomorrow like that sometimes you, you reach your limit yeah. and you just have to stop so that you can regroup and try again. Yeah. But it's, I, I don't know, who, um, what's his name? Gosh, I'm going to think about it for a 
Richard Branson. Mm, is he the Richard. one who was talking about you have to know when to quit? And I think I'm still yes, I think he was. Yes, yeah. yeah. I think I'm still learn. I'm still trying to learn that because like, <laughs> like okay, if something's like absolutely not working. You have to just let it go. Yeah, and I think it's good. You have to let go and then reevaluate. And I think failure is something where it's like we have to just get used to. Yeah, we have to get used to failing and you know letting it go and not being so like critical in like a negative way towards ourselves yeah. and just more loving you yeah. know like more we forgiving definitely, we definitely feel like we i i've never met a dyslexic person who didn't struggle with perfectionism yeah like that is a that is a big drive in us and i think it's part of what drives us to be so successful like I, I, which is good, but I think it's also maybe drives us a little crazy <laughs> at the same time. We kind of become our worst enemy in a yes, sense. Yes, yeah. that is a really nice way, a really good way of putting it. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, like the number one person in our way is ourselves <laughs> most of the I time. I feel like I have like some arguments with myself, and I'm like, you know what? It's just it's coming up to that time in the month where I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna have this breakdown, <laughs> and I'm just gonna be like, what's going on with my life? But then I can laugh it off after and be like, okay, let's, you know, start this new... And I don't even... I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, hey, I'm crazy. Like, hope no one sees the mental breakdown. But then I'm okay. And I'm like, you know what? We're going to we're gonna be okay. And then I'm like, I'm having a conversation with myself. And I'm like, this isn't good. But at least I can see that. And I'm like, you know, I'm, t- yeah. I'm talking with myself, trying to figure out a new way. But at the and same not just, time... Not just, like, letting those words... Not even just having an argument with myself. <laughs> that's going to get nowhere. <laughs> I know so that's I'm like, okay, it's time for a pep talk. Yeah, I just talk to myself. So the next question related to that is um, the challenges of being dyslexic is how has that changed after intervention? So post-intervention, learning how to read, learning how to spell, learning, you know, that those letters have sounds and <laughs> then you group them together and pull them apart. Like, how did, how did that change for you? I feel that... Well, reading and spelling is not an issue for me anymore. That's I think awesome. spelling, like when I, I think f- trying to find a word that I want, I feel like that's still something where I'm like working on. Like, mm-hmm. what word do I want to choose that's like really good? That would make my story like intriguing. Um, but spelling is like, I use my rules consistently. It takes me a little bit more time. Like I feel like my processing is a little bit slower, but I'm still getting where I need to go. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like when I, cause I'm a huge painter. I love painting and arts. Um, I worked on my reading so much and spelling that that like that's what I hyper focused on for like so many years yeah. that I feel like I kind of lost my techniques of how to paint and draw and I felt like kind of maybe kind of lost. So I feel like after I started the intervention, I was like, you know, I really want to go back into painting again. So I went into paint cl- art, like art classes yeah, and things like that. Yeah. Again, right? and, yeah, and and I've been like painting ever since, and that's something where it's like yeah. I kind of had to gain that back, but that's something where I'm like you know what I really missed out on that but I feel like now I'm so happy because I'm actually doing what I love to do and it totally makes sense too right because you do have to work so hard that you're not going to have that energy for those things but it's yeah I had to it's like I sacrificed you know arts but and I and I remember like trying to paint again I'm like what do I paint and I was thinking like what am I thinking and I'm just thinking of like words and like (laughs) like and it's weird and I'm like why can't I think of like something like a cool picture or so I feel like that was where I was like, okay, I got a, like I got my sketchbook and, and I would just go out and I would just like sketch things. It was waiting there for you. Yeah. So, so I was just kind of like I, I went I found those things and I started drawing those things and that's kind of how I got back into it. It is so cool. Yeah. So that's something that's yeah. Um, what about you? For me, I think it was just part of it was just a really big relief. Mm, yeah. Uh, like, it, and it was absolutely essential to me like starting to heal myself and all this stuff you know like just to know that I was enough you know I know it sounds so strange but like to be like holy crap like yeah I have been trying like a hundred percent my right. whole life it was just this thing and then having it be fixed it was just it was crazy how much more energy was in my life how like how many more activities I could go back to like I I love crochet and knitting and I love making like crochet dolls and, mm-hmm. and like and figuring out patterns and all this kind of stuff and that was like super fun I like I loved meeting other people with dyslexia mm-hmm. I'd never met anyone that was, I think was too part of my um, the isolation that I experienced was 
because I kept all of that to myself. Yeah. I never. I'm sure I met lots and lots of people dyslexic because that's gonna be another one. Like, yeah, we're gonna have a video yeah, about that. I'm excited you about are that. all. You are always meeting people with dyslexia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, if you don't know, or, or if you're struggling, you just feel like okay, I gotta keep that inside. So that was like a really my mental health got so much better the night of that of that thing when I was of the Susan Barton thing I yeah. like cried for like four hours and then I just felt like I knew when I woke up if that makes it's sense. like an in, it's uh, just like an enlightenment of like yeah. something new and you're like whoa yeah. and like I woke up the next day just being like <clears throat> holy crap like I'm worth it I'm worthwhile and this none of this has been my fault yeah and that was the biggest thing like you just feel like like, like I feel like it's like right. I feel like we always thought about like what's wrong with me yeah instead of being like wow this is a gift like this yeah. is something that like has given me so many other skills and being able to focus like yeah. I was so focused on this one thing yes for me like I still find reading really hard I don't I don't read a lot I don't think I, I I read technical things like I read stuff to teach myself things but even just being able to be like I can teach myself anything I've always been able to teach myself anything well, that's a right. huge skill that I couldn't focus on before because I couldn't learn in school and my whole focus was if you can't learn in school you are dumb and ignoring the fact <laughs> that I taught myself yeah, you know of outside of it right yeah. and, and just being <clears> like <throat> so that was like I just I feel like the joy in my heart right now just <laughs> it was amazing when that like just having that and really I and I always talk to my mom. I'm always like, you know what? I love you, mom. Like, thank <laughs> you so much. Like, you you know, like you got me. Like, I've gotten so far. I graduated high school. I'm going into college. It's crazy. And I'm like, wow. I would have never thought that I would have been able to do all that. Like, yeah. right? So it's like, and I'm like so grateful. I think that that's what I'm. I'm really grateful that it, it totally has changed my life and it's given me new. It's opened doors. I think it's opened yeah. so many doors of I what I could do. It's so weird because <clears throat> like literacy. It, it, we like to think of things as building blocks, but literacy is not a building block. Literacy is the absolute foundation of yeah, human like culture. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> like is, everything. If you yeah. can't read and spell, there is you're stuck. You're stuck forever. Like you know, and and it's such a despondent and depressing place to be to realize that you are stuck. And then when you when you learn and you realize, okay, and you can participate in in every aspect of of humanity again like yeah i don't know like it's kind of like getting i imagine it's like getting let out of jail when you're like <laughs> like wrongfully accused that's you're like yes yeah, like, i'm free you were put in jail and you were innocent and you knew you were innocent and then all of a sudden everybody's like oh my god we knew you were innocent come out of jail like that's what it feels like <laughs> like i don't know if that's a good, good no, I, I get that yeah, yeah like, that's kind of like how i felt like you're just like holy moly yeah because it's just like I, I don't know if people think of that. Think of the fact that, like, without reading and writing, you don't have history, you don't have culture, you don't have business, you don't have, like, yeah. you don't have anything. You're just yeah. kind of floating. And it's very hard to be untethered like that. And I feel like there's there's dyslexics where it's like, you're, if your memory is, like, amazing, well, then it's just like, whatever. Memorize everything then. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> memorize it all, and then it's like, it's, it's good. Yeah. You know, that gets you through that part. But I know now it's so easier because we have YouTube and yeah. we have all of these resources like Audible is amazing. I love Audible because oh it's like those are where it's like I want to read this book, but it takes me forever to read it. But I feel like but now I do. I do love to read. I love yeah. to read now. Yeah, I love to like read books and I feel so happy that I can actually read it. And I'm like, oh, this is such a good book. And I get into it and I'm like laughing by myself. <laughs> like that when I watch TV, I laugh to myself. Weirdly, <laughs> like, that's how I feel when I'm reading, like, technical things. Yeah. Like, I'm just so happy that... You're like, yay! I'm like, I understand this, I'm reading it. It's like, it just makes you feel so good. Yeah. And I just feel like, I can't, I don't know, for me, I think it's the perfectionism thing. I can't, I don't like sitting down to read fiction because my brain is like, you're spending all this effort <laughs> and this is a story that's not real. So, like, I'll listen to that for sure. Yeah. But, like, yeah, that's why I, I love nonfiction. Like, it's my absolute favorite. I love information. And just the fact that I can participate in that now. Yeah. Like, oh, for sure. It's just awesome. Awesome. For sure. And I think the one of the biggest change of finding out dyslexic is just that, like, I feel like I found purpose. Like, I've struggled very much with not having purpose, and just my purpose is to try my best to make sure that no other dyslexic people feel the way I did, you know? So if you're a student, too, and I'm, like, pushing you, pushing you, pushing you, it's because I want you to be 
feeling like this when you're little <laughs> so you feel this way your entire life yeah that's why i think oh for sure like, i can, I can totally agree with yeah like yeah. that is definitely my that's my reason for doing this <laughs> you know yeah, like for sure yeah yeah yeah. Well, I think we're gonna wrap it up, guys. That was our podcast for today, knowing me and Clea. Um, so again, anybody who wants to subscribe, you can ring that bell. And if you like to leave a thumbs up, That'd we want to try awesome. and reach like what? What's our goal for our thumbs up? I want like I want like four hundred by the end of the summer. Yes. Yeah. That's <laughs> I'm, I'm down. Let's September first, I want four hundred. And if you have any ideas as well, like for um, topics. And if you want to come, we'd love to do interviews. We'd lo- Like I said before, we want to make our dyslexic community. So hit us up, comment below. Um, I can't think of anything else. I think that's everything yeah. else. See you later, guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye.